We have uh, Mr. Martin Kettman on the line. Martin, how's it going today? Good, good, man. How are you guys? Doing good, thanks. Uh, we haven't talked to you in a while, so why don't you just um, catch us up on what's been going on with you lately? Uh, just, uh, you know, killing up some injuries. You know, my knees been bugging me. Uh, I had surgery on it last summer, and it's uh, kind of going up and down. Um, but I've had a little different kind of treatments done, too, and it, it's starting to get better. You know, it's still bugging me a little bit, but it's definitely starting to get better. And, uh, you know, now it's time when I want to start to get a fight lined up so I have some to train, uh, to train uh, aim for. But I've still been training, you know. I've just been, been working around the injuries and, and doing what I could do. Okay. When would you like to return to action? I mean, if, if you had your choice. I'd like to be fighting uh, June or July this summer. June or July. And I know last week you came out on Twitter. You you know, you said you don't have any fights lined up. You'd like to tackle some of, like, the bigger names on last week against Card. Um, is that where you still stand? I mean, who stands out to you after after uh, 158's now over? I mean, who would you like to face on, on coming off that event? Well, you know, um, more than anything, I'd like to fight a, a top-10 opponent, you know. So guys like uh, Diaz. Safadine, but also, you know, Garnet could be a, a possibility. We, we fought before. We had a great match, and uh, it'd be fun to do it again. But uh, definitely I want to fight some of the guys in the top ten, and, and, and most likely they, you know, they're going to match me up with somebody coming off a loss. So that uh, limits it down to, to not that many options, but um, those those three guys I think would be a, a good, good fight. Okay. What did you think about... Um the fight between GSP and Nick Diaz, did that go the way you, you kind of saw it going, or were you surprised? No, it was pretty much what I uh, expected, uh, how the fight would turn out. <laughs> That's it. Right on. I, I, go ahead. No, I thought it was uh, interesting in round three. You know, when, when Diaz uh, started landing some shots on him, it looked like he actually... Uh, uh, locked uh, GSP a little bit, you know. That that's when you know everybody got fired up. When I was watching the fight, and you know, uh, but then GSP got him down again, and and kind of just uh, continued to uh, to um, you know work his game on. Him. All right. What what I found was interesting, kind of like in the post fight aftermath, was Caesar Caesar came out. I think it was yesterday, and said that he thought it was weird that GSP was kind of one step ahead of, of Nick. On when they were when they were in the grappling exchanges, kind of saw what they were working on coming, and he 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 hinted that, you know, maybe they had like a spy or a member from the media that saw Nick training and drilling, kind of leaked it to GSP. And I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that, that as a fighter you have to worry about when you're training? I mean, are, is that a reality that people spy and they leak info? Yeah, I think it happens all the time. You know, you hear guys, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that. But in reality, I don't think it's going to help that much. You know, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, you know. I think you, you prepare for, uh, you know, a fight. And, and uh, you know, nobody comes into a fight with just one 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 tool and one way to win the fight, you know. Right. I'm sure, Diaz, Diaz has tons of uh, options. You know, he's a great jiu-jitsu guy. And there's, uh, you know, so many different things you could, you could vary his attack with. So, um I don't think that even if, if somebody saw him working on something specific and they told GSP, I don't think it should make that much of a difference, you know. Okay. And what about um not to, I don't I don't want to talk too much about the fight, the G S P D S fight, but let's just get this your take on this last thing. Um Nick Diaz said he was probably gonna retire. You know, he said he doesn't want to fight these young guys coming up, that they don't interest him. You know, there was a few matchups that he named. He said maybe a rematch for Condon or he'd love to refight a rematch with GSP. And um, are you surprised at that? Um, is, he, does he, is he coming from, like, the right place, not wanting to, to fight some of, like, the newer, tougher guys in the division? Can you, like, relate to that? Or, I mean, what are your thoughts? No, man, I don't listen to so much of that guy says. You know, most of the <laughs> stuff that comes out of his mouth don't make sense anyway. So, um, I don't, I don't uh, take any notice to that. Okay, cool. Uh, Mark, I, what, what I wanted to ask um, is, uh, coming out of this last weekend's pay per view, a lot of people are actually talking about matching the, the potential matchup of you and Nick Diaz. Is that a fight you've thought about for a while? Uh, I mean, he's been the Strike Force champion. He's been calling out uh, UFC fighters. Uh, specifically the welterweights for a, a long time. He, he finally got his chance against the champ. Um, 
But is that a fight that you've been looking at, and how do you think that your style matches up with him? Yeah, I'd be happy to fight him, you know. I'd be happy to fight him. He's he's still got a ton of hype behind him, and people, uh, you know, uh, he's ranked in top ten, so so that'd be a good win for me. And, and uh, um, yeah, I'd love to beat his ass. But uh, so, but, but if you uh, if you take it a step further and you look at like uh, how the fight would be, most most people are talking about it probably being a fight of the night. Uh, your styles match up uh, so well that you know for it to be an exciting fight. Uh, how do you look at uh, when you look at the guys that have shut down Nick Diaz's game? Uh, there's been a couple ways people have done it. Uh, GSP obviously used the takedowns this past weekend, but Condit took a a different route and was kind of moving moving backwards and uh, using more angles and, and things like that and uh, landing one or two shots at a time. Is, which do you think is the better way to fight a style like Nick Diaz, who's going to come straight forward and uh, try to pull out a yeah, shot you know, there's definitely, where you are? There's, there's definitely ways to beat, beat the guy. You know, there's different, different ways to beat, you know, all kind of guys. You know, and the, we've got some different, uh, you know, we've seen some different ways that he's gotten beat, but... Um, most people that see my fights know that my style is not to 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 run that much backwards. You know, I, I like to come in there and fight. I like to go for the finish. And uh, you know, KJ Nunes had a had a won the first fight. He was he was boxing. He was in there, you know, thrown down with him. So there's different ways to do it. You know, uh, he's had problems with wrestlers as well. Um, there's there's different ways you can beat him. You know, I'm 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 open for. Fall, you know, I, I I fight my own way. I fight my own style, and I'd come in there and and and, uh, and do it. However, you know the way I fight, and um, I, I don't usually run. I'm I'm there to fight, and I think it definitely make a great potential for fight of the night. Okay, cool. Go, on, uh, <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead, Alex. I was just gonna ask you, Martin. Um, another another hot topic on, or another hot fight on the card was fight of the night. Uh, you fought both guys, Johnny Hendricks and Carlos Condit. I want to know what you thought of that fight, and um, do you think that the decision was just justly earned by Hendricks? I thought it was a great fight. You know, um, I think uh, it was fair that Johnny won won the fight. Uh, he was pressing a lot of the action, but you know, Condit was definitely hanging in there. I, I really, more than anything, I'd love to see two more rounds. You know, I'd love to see that fight be a five rounder. Um, because uh, it seemed like John Connor was starting to pick up a little bit more in, in the, towards the end, so I would have liked to see two rounds more. But I think uh, Johnny earned the win. Do you think that if there were two rounds, that you could probably see the momentum sh- shift, the momentum shifting to Condit? Because that's what I kind of thought. I kind of thought when I was watching the fight, I was like, man, two more rounds, this might go Condit's way. I mean, I could be he wrong. Said, he was certainly getting back in the fight, but uh, you know, you never know. I, I can uh, anybody can speculate, but. Really, we, we have to see. Uh, you know, doesn't matter. It was a three-round fight, and, and and that's how it is. You know, I've had three rounds. It's where I wish I had two more rounds too. And and unfortunately, you know, sometimes you don't like get it. Yeah, um, Johnny Hendricks is the likely next uh, fighter to face George St. Pierre. He's the number one contender. Do you think that's um that that's earned that he deserves that shot? Yeah, I think he definitely deserves it. You know, um. I mean, and we, we we had a fight where I, I fucked up and and uh, and uh, got caught. So that should have been really the number one contendership fight. So uh, he got screwed over by Diaz coming in, in the first place. So I, I definitely think he deserves the number one spot. Um, let's talk about your fight with Johnny real quick. I mean, that was a really quick fight. It, you know, it was under a minute first round. He stopped you. Um, I know that has to really hurt. You're you're a guy who always puts on good fights. You you fight the best guys in the world. You did it at middleweight, and you've done it at welterweight. And what are your thoughts? You know, picking up the pieces, coming off of that loss. What do you what do you do, and how do you um, motivate yourself to come back? Or is that motivation enough just to come back? You know, I've been a slow starter in a lot of my fights. You know, when I fought Jake Elmer, I got knocked down in the first minute. Two, I mean, probably in the first thirty seconds, I got knocked down. But I came back, knocked him out. But, you know, i got to work on uh, being a little bit more uh, on my toes from the get-go. You know, I get in there, and I'm kind of kind of slow to start off, and, and then people capitalize on it, you know. And um, I used to be a fast starter. I used to get in there and try to just uh, 
get on on the other guy's neck and call, you know. But somewhere along the line, I got I got I got a little slow, but um, it's something I'm gonna pick up in in training. And and uh, you know, when you start slow like that, that that's a, that's a risk. You know, you get clipped with a hard shot, especially like a guy like Giant that hits hard. But um, I feel I can beat him, and I feel uh, uh, you know I would love that fight to go go longer, but. You know, unfortunately, uh, it finished before I even got started. So um, it's just a fuck up on my part. But I'll come back stronger. I'll learn from my mistake. Right. Is it hard? Like, let's say, I mean, I haven't talked to you since after the fight, really. So uh, that that first, you know, 30 minutes after the fight, what goes through your mind when you lose in that when you lose in that fashion? Uh, you know, just disappointed more than anything. Disappointed and, and you know, disappointed in yourself. And your own performance because um, I could have done a lot better. And uh, I've trained with Johnny in the past, and you know, I feel comfortable coming in there to fight him. But um, sometimes, you know, you fuck up and things don't go your way. Mm-hmm. Is it is it something that I mean? Everybody says they get better from the loss. They learn from the loss, and and it's and obviously you have to keep a positive mindset. But is it is it was it really hard? I mean, is it really hard in that circumstance? to get over it? Like, does it take, like, a week? Or not Not to be, like, a downer. I'm just curious to know what your thoughts <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah, you are kind of fucking rubbing it in now, huh? <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, of course, you know, I never get over a loss. I want to revenge all my losses I ever had. I want to re- revenge every single one of them, you know. I, I never get over a loss. But, I mean, you, you, you know, that's part of life. you got to move on and you got to step on up to the next one, you know. Um, but it sucks, but... That's, that's okay. how it is. You can't can't change the past. You gotta look forward, and uh, the best thing you can do is, is learn from the mistakes and 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 uh, correct those mistakes and come back stronger. All right, on. Okay. Has the UFC made any contact with you uh, in in the recent days or weeks to try to feel you out for potential opponents? Um, I just had a really short uh, uh, um, conversation with email with Joe Silva, and I just told him I'd like to fight this summer and. And uh, he's he's uh, hopefully working on it. So, but they haven't come back with any potential dates or potential opponents yet. So, uh, we'll see what uh, what he comes up with, and uh, we'll take it from there. But hopefully, uh, you know, I know they're booking the fight card so far out. You know, that's why I I contact them in the first place because, um, you know, even though I got minor stuff bugging me, you know, you got to get on them and and and. and and tell them you want to fight because they they booked the fight cards already in in July and all they starting to, to fill up fill up all the fight cards. So if you want to get in, you're gonna to have to let them know. And and, um, and I'd love to get a fight in. I don't want to wait too long because I'm, I'm back. I'm training hard and and um, even though minor stuff is bugging me, I'm still in the gym and I'm still in there sparring and, and wrestling and doing whatever. So I'm I'm ready. I want to fight in. Martin, what are your thoughts on um, a lot of the uh, the guys from Strike Force and other organizations coming over to the UFC? Um, they have they've had a lot of good success, whereas you know a lot of the U- uh, former UFC fighters uh, like Nate Marquardt, they've had a little bit of a rough patch, even uh, even fighting in Strike Force or uh, you know coming back to the UFC. It, it, they just haven't looked the same, and guys that you that people that people thought were flying under the radar. Uh, ended up looking a lot, you know, a lot better than people thought, like Derek Safety and uh, Tyron Woodley. Are you surprised that the Strike Force fighters and a lot of the other uh, 170 pounders outside of the UFC are doing so well inside the octagon? Well, I think you know, Mark he became the champion. So even though he had a two losses now, you know, he still had it. You know, he had a good fight. He beat up Woodley in a great fight. He got a great knockout. So it's not all. You know, he hasn't been all that bad, I should say. But uh, no, I mean, I know they have tough guys in Strike Force, and um, and um, I think you know the top guys in Strike Force are, are definitely good. But they also, you know, I'm just, you know, we'll see how the the rest of the people do. But uh, they've done really good so far. Um, I'd, I'd like to fight uh, Safadine as well. You know, like I also said, I already welcomed the WEC champion over, and I welcomed the Strike Force. A middleweight champion over, you know, in, in Jake Shields and, and Coach Condit. So I was their first fights in the UFC, and um, I thought I won both of them, but the judges didn't give me the decision against Shields. But um, I'd love to welcome one more. 
do you think? Do you feel like the uh, a lot of the champions from um, the uh, other, like the other rival organization, big organization now, is Bellator, and uh, a lot of their champions now um, they they call themselves the number one guys in the world. Uh, they feel like they are that that a lot of them have earned that praise by beating certain guys. Ben Askren went on the record this weekend saying that he's 100 percent sure he could beat George St. Pierre. Do you think that? Um, is this just hype, or do you do you really think that a lot of these guys could come in here and and be top five guys just like that? I'm sure they could do uh, all right. You know, I don't think they would. Uh, I don't. I don't think they would come in and and, and uh, tear things apart. But I'm sure they could do all, all right. I mean, I, I trained with uh, uh, Michael Chandler, who's the um, the lightweight champion, and uh, you know. I love training with that guy. He's a great guy. He's a phenomenal athlete, and he's a he's a great champion. And um, you know, I know it for a fact because I've trained with him. So I'm sure he would do great in the UFC. Uh, but you know, I don't know about the other guys. I, I think uh, I think uh, overall the, the skill level in the UFC is a lot a lot higher than it is uh, you know anywhere else. It's switching gears, um, you know, you've been training at Extreme Couture for a while. That camp has gone through a lot of changes um, in recent times. A lot of guys have uh, come and gone. They're all still family and welcome there, I, I, uh, from, what, by, from what I understand. Um, but what's the atmosphere like? How are things? How have things changed uh, since you first uh, became uh, full time at Extreme Couture to the present time? Oh, we just have a lot more guys that's been uh, going different gyms. I mean, I, I go to different gyms as well. Um, but I mean, uh, extreme mature is still still my home where I train. But I, I go I go other gyms as well. Just uh, um, um, a lot of guys been been coming and going, and there's been some changes. And it's a long long story. But um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have that that many uh, of the best guys to train with anymore. So some guys been been going out to get some of the sparring in in other gyms. Um, but we still got a, a ton of great guys to work with in Vegas, they just uh, spread out a little bit more than they used to be. Have, have you ever thought about making a full-time switch so that you could uh, uh, always get uh, uh, good sparring and good, and good training in that you, that you know it's 24, that you know it's always going to be there when you walk through the doors? Oh, I still, I still, get, I still get good training in at Couture. So I, just, I just have to make sure that, uh, you know, I'll, I just make sure that, that there's guys to work with when I come in. So, you know, we still have great guys to work with there, but for um for a minute people wasn't showing up consistently for the for the pro team practices. So, you know, when I go there I just make sure that I, I have some good guys to work with and and I still have get good guys to come in and we work and uh you know, I I go to other gyms in town as well. Uh I go to Dry I go to Syndicate and, and I get good good training in there as well. But uh you know, extreme tours is is where um, you know, it was kind of where I started out um, before um, when I was in the U.S. Actually, we started out in different gyms, kind of around town. And town, but uh, when Randy opened up Extreme and and everybody moved to there, and we had a great uh, we had a great great team there. But uh, everybody's kind of been shattered a little bit uh, around the place. But um, we'll see what what happens. I, I still get good training in there, but uh, for some some training, I, I have to go. Elsewhere, depending on the day and the situation. Martin, what, what's what's changed over there? What, what what or not? What's changed? You just explained what's changed. But what do you think caused the change? Is it that Randy's since Randy's retirement and he's taken kind of a step back from the whole scene? We don't see him cornering that many guys anymore. And um, I definitely think you know when when he stopped fighting and and uh, he started pursuing other uh, interests, you know, like doing movies and stuff like that. He didn't come into the gym as much as he used to. Where he used to, you know, be in the gym a lot, and that that had a he had, a, you know, he had a great um, effect. You know, I used to, I, I love having Randy run, run practice. You know, and, and uh, he's just an uh, inspiration to have in the gym. And I think maybe that that uh, he wasn't there so much has something to do with it. But uh, also just uh, other things. You know, some guys moved out of town because of, you know, girlfriends or whatever, and uh, some other guys moved because other stuff. And there's just a lot of different things and uh, people moving away and not, not necessarily anything wrong with the gym, but um, you get it just had a, uh, you know, a bad spot where, where some guys weren't showing up for a little bit because of vacation and whatever. 
and then uh, all of a sudden guys start showing up at the other gym, and then and then when the guys are there, then then that's where people are going to show up, and it's just the way it is. You know, people have been kind of going everywhere in Vegas because there's so many great gyms to go to. So um, we'll see what happens. Okay. When when the UFC was here in um, Anaheim just a couple weeks ago. I was I was hanging out with a, a Las Vegas resident, Dan Hardy. Um, he was in town for uh, I think it was Zion's, and he told me because he used to train out here. He trained in L.A. Uh, where I live at a place called Punch Kick Grapple, and he trained there for a long time, and then he moved off. And he said that the the training is just way more professional in Las Vegas, and uh, he said it doesn't really matter what gym you go to, the training is just very regimented. It's more professional, and that it's nothing in comparison to the Southern California scene. And I'm wondering, in your experiences, do you kind of feel the same way? Is that why you're landlocked in Vegas, and that's why you call it home? I mean, I actually, um, you know, I haven't trained that many other places in the States besides here in Vegas, so I know I'd actually love to go to Southern California and train a little bit. I like California. Um, but, you know, I love to train here in Vegas. There's so many great gyms to choose from, and, and there's so many great guys that has Vegas as their base, so you know you, you can always get good sparring partners and good training partners, whether you're looking for a good grappler or a good wrestler or a good striker. You know, you have world-class athletes and, and the, some of the best MMA fighters here living as well, but um, I'm sure they've got good training other places in the world as well, I mean, or in the States. I've I trained a lot in Europe, uh, but in the States, most of my training has been done in, in Vegas, but actually, I'd like to I'd like to go out and get some more training and see to check out the other gyms just for fun of it. You know, I used to do that a lot when I was living in Denmark. I'd go up to Sweden a lot, up into Norway to train, just to come out, you know, train for a week and get some inspiration and, and uh, get a new look on things, you know. But mm -hmm. I love being in Vegas and for training. That's what, what got me here is, is the training. You know, it gets too much with the heat in the summer, but that's when I try to go to Denmark because that's, that's the best time being in Denmark. But... That's what got me here in the first place, training and, and, the, and the training partners. Uh, so what, you know, we definitely have some more, more class training. So what, stop, what stops you from, from branching out a little bit, let's say, you know, spending a couple of weeks out here in Southern California and getting some time in? Is there anything, or it's just a matter of just buckling down and doing it? No, nothing to hold me back. You know, but uh, everything's kind of, you know, add up. I've had injury that's kind of been, you know, I don't want to go somewhere and train if I can only half-ass it. You know, I want to be able to go out and train. And, and 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 commit to it, but uh, you know, also I got I got two kids and all that stuff. You know, it's not it's not as easy as when you're just on your own, where you can just take off and do whatever you feel like. But when you got kids to watch out for too, you know, you can't just uh, can't just take off whenever you feel like it. You gotta plan everything a little bit. Everything gotta get planned a little bit more than than it used to. Right. Do you ever worry about? Um training with people that you may be matched up with in the future or is that does that really does that would that bother you or do you do you not care? No, I, I train with a lot of different guys in the in the workweight division, you know, and, and uh it doesn't bother me uh to train with guys I would potentially fight. Um I think uh you know of course, you know, if you if you're he's gonna have get an eye on what you you're good at and you're gonna get an eye on what he's good at, but it, it goes both ways and more than anything, you know, I think, you know, it's, it's beneficial. You know, you might not fight each other, but uh, you can be fighting other guys, and then you can you can benefit from training with each other. So, you know, um, I don't I don't uh, put too much thought into that. You know, I wouldn't mind training with any other guys who potentially fight. Okay. I, I already done that in the past. You know, I trained with Jake Shields before I fought him. And, um, well, so I've trained with a lot of different guys that I... Uh, I trained with other guys. I can't remember who, but uh, I trained with other guys that I ended up fighting before. Okay, cool. Um, I want to get your take also, Martin, while we have you on the line on the Mark Hart Ellenberger fight. That that's, wasn't the other uh, marquee fight last weekend. Uh, you fought both those guys, and, um, you know, you lost an eight. That was a middleweight fight. Uh, you beat Jake Ellenberger. Um, what are your thoughts of that fight? Were you surprised by the outcome? Um, I thought, uh, you know, I thought definitely that the, the match was supposed to even matched up, and I, I could I could definitely see uh, Marquardt come away with the win as well. But, uh, you know, Elmberger's tough, and, you know, he's a heavy hitter, and the small gulfs, and uh, you get caught, then sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a short night, and uh, it was for uh, for Marquardt. So, you know, it just goes to show, you know, Elmberger's tough, and, and uh, he hits hard. I, I know that from my first-hand experience myself. 
if the UFC, if the UFC called you up and said, hey, you know, we have a fight for you with Nate Marquardt, you know, you guys fought at middleweight, let's do it again at welterweight. Is that is that a fight you jump all over? That you know, like I said earlier, you know, I'd like to revenge all my my losses, and and, and uh, that's also a possibility. But but more than anything, right now, I'd like to fight somebody in the top ten, and, and he's not as high up as the rankings rankings as, for example, Condit. The, even though I have a win over him, but I, I, my my uh, goal right now is to climb back up in the rankings and get, you know, I, I was I was close to a title shot and then I got knocked down. But get, the way to get back there is to fight the best guys and uh, and uh, I I, I want to fight top ten guys more than anything. It, it seems it seems to me, Martin, you've been you've been you've been real really like kind of like on the cusp of of a, of a title shot, you know. Um, you 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 beat you beat guys you know you beat Rick you beat the Rick Story you beat Jake Ellenberger you beat tough guys I mean you had wars you had a war with Diego Sanchez and Jake Shields those decisions didn't go your way even though I completely disagree with both those decisions but thanks um, <laughs> I know I know you do too we've talked about this in the past you and I but um <clears throat> how, what what does it take what does it take for you now like wh- if you have goals if your goal is to get that title shot. In your in your opinion, how do you reach that goal? Where do where do you have where do you go from here to finally? You know what? Every time I start uh, getting close and uh, about to get a title shot, is when I seem to fuck up and uh, and and lose the next fight. So I'll just you know my goal is to beat everybody they put in front of me. But of course, I want to climb the rankings and then uh, I want to fight the best guys there is. You know, more than anything, you know, I want want to fight the champion. But that's not how it works. I have to beat some top guys, get the number one contendership. To, to get the champ, but uh, if I can't get the champion, I'd like to get the the next best guy. If I can't get him, I'd like to get the next best guy. I want to fight the best guys I can get, and I want to beat him, and that's what I'm going to do. So, so match me up with anybody in the top ten, and and I'll beat him up and show him that I belong in the top. Why? Do, okay. Why do you think it is? Just using your words, you know, you re, you re, get so close and then you fuck up. So, is that a mental thing, or is that just just like the luck of the of the freaking draw? Is that just the way it seems to be going? What what is your? Uh, I'm not sure. It could be a mental thing. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, could be just a uh, tough luck. Okay. All right, Martin. I think I think that um, you've been more than gracious with your time today. Uh, George, do you have any more questions for Martin before we let him off? I just wanted to get his, uh, a, quick, a quick thought on his teammate's fight. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking to Mike Piles shortly. Uh, his teammate is fighting Gunnar Nelson. Gunnar Nelson is a uh, highly regarded submission grappler and jiu-jitsu guy um, and also uh, causing a little bit of a buzz in the uh, welterweight division. What do you think about that fight? Um, is, is that a fight? That, does Gunnar Nelson pose any sort of problems that Mike Pyle hasn't seen before? I think uh I think uh Mike's gonna whoop Gunnar Nelson's ass, to be honest with you. I think uh Mike's too experienced, you know, he's uh he's got so many fights and he's only getting better, you know. He's starting to you know, get his head together and, and go in there and, and kick ass, you know, he's knocked out the last three guys he's fought, so and I think he's gonna knock out Gunnar as well. I just trained with Mike yesterday and uh and he's uh, you know, Ending up the string and getting ready to go in and prepare for for Gunner and um, and we were in there yesterday working a little bit and you know just having fun training and and uh, he's looking good. I think he's gonna kick Gunner's ass. All right, well, thanks, awesome. Martin. Uh, appreciate your time. For sure, anytime, guys.